determine whether this stereo center is R or S. I hope that you paused the video and gave it a shot. Now let's go through it together. We'll put dots in for the atoms that are directly connected to the stereo center. Of the dotted atoms, the highest atomic number is bromine. That gets the number one priority. Then fluorine gets the number two. Oxygen gets the number three. And the carbon gets the number four. Now we have to determine whether we're in case one or case two. Well, the number four priority is on the horizontal bow tie pointing towards us. So we're in case two. The number four is not pointing into the page. Step one, swap the priority four with a group that is pointing into the page. Let's swap the number four and the number one priorities. So where the number four priority used to be, we're going to put the number one. And where the number one priority used to be, we got to put the number four. Now the number four is pointing away from us. If you wanted to, it would be perfectly fine to swap the four and the three. You can make either swap. Step two, what's the configuration now of one to two to three? Well, one to two, two to three, back to one, counterclockwise, S. After the swap, the configuration of one to two to three is counterclockwise. So what was the original configuration before the swap? Well, step three, before the swap, the configuration must have been opposite to what it was after the swap. That's the single swap rule. A single swap always gives you the opposite configuration to what you started with. So what was the answer to the question? The answer is that the correct original configuration was R. This is an R stereo center. Once again, we've demonstrated uh, good notation for this type of problem. Write down the priority numbers, then cross out the priorities that you're swapping and put in the new priority numbers. Once again, it's not necessary to move the atoms, you can just swap the numbers. Then write down in step two whether the configuration is R or S on the page, and then in step three, cross out the original letter and write down the opposite letter. Again, it's probably a really good idea to actually write down the letter you get from step two, cross it out, and write down the new letter from step three, especially when you're just learning this method. It makes us less likely to make careless mistakes. Determine whether this stereo center is R or S. First of all, we have to find the stereo center. This carbon is the stereo center because it's attached to four different groups. Let me put an asterisk in to indicate that that's the stereo center. It's oftentimes a really good idea to put an asterisk in for the stereo center. This is attached to four different groups, a methyl group, an ethyl group, a hydroxy, and a hidden hydrogen. And we should just go straight ahead and write in that hidden hydrogen. Anytime you're determining RRS for a stereo center, you should always draw in the hidden hydrogen if there is one. Of course, since the hydroxy is on the dash, the hidden hydrogen must be on the wedge. Now we determine the priorities. Let's put dots in for the directly connected atoms. The oxygen gets the number one priority. The hydrogen gets the number four priority. But the carbon on the right is tied with the carbon on the left. So let's make a list of the three atoms that each of those dotted carbons is attached to. Well, this carbon is attached to three hidden hydrogens, because it's a methyl group. And this hydrogen on the left is attached to one carbon and then two hidden hydrogens. If that's at all difficult for you to see, you should go ahead and draw in those hidden hydrogens as well. The first point of difference becomes at the first atoms in the list, this carbon beats this hydrogen. So on the left, we have the number two priority, and on the right, we have the number three priority. After you determine, after you determine the priorities, it's always a good idea to erase the work that you did so it doesn't distract you as you go on to the next step. So let's erase our work. Now we have to check where the number four priority is. Is it pointing into the page or not? Here's the number four priority. It's not pointing into the page. It's on a wedge pointing out of the page. So again, we're in this method. 
the number four priority is not pointing into the page. Step one, swap it so that it is pointing into the page. Well, in this case, we have no choice. We have to swap it then with group one, because that's the only group that's pointing into the page. So let's swap where the four used to be. We'll put the priority one, and where the one used to be, we'll put the priority four. No other swap would work here because we have to swap the number four so it's pointing away from us, and only the number one was originally pointing away from us. Once again, you don't need to redraw where the hydroxy and the hydrogen are, you can just swap their numbers. Step two, what's the configuration of one to two to three on the page? Now, one to two, two to three, back to one. On the page, we have clockwise. So from step two, we have R for clockwise. Then step three, before we made the swap, the original configuration must have been S. The correct answer to this problem is that the stereo center is S. Well, a few minutes ago, we did a couple of examples of how to use this method for Fisher projections. But now you can see that the method works just as well for non-Fisher projections. This is a method that works just fine for both Fisher projections and non-Fisher projections. Let me point out again the importance of drawing in this hidden hydrogen on the stereo center. And it also might have been useful to draw in the hidden hydrogens on these atoms as well if you had any trouble finding the priorities. Determine whether this stereo center is R or S. Let's put an asterisk in for the stereo center. Let's dot the four atoms that are directly connected to the stereo center. Of those, bromine has the highest atomic number, number one. Fluorine has the next atomic number, number two. The carbon on the left is tied with the carbon on the right. The carbon on the right is attached to a carbon and two hidden hydrogens. And the carbon on the left is attached to three hidden hydrogens. The first point of difference comes at the first atoms in the list. This carbon beats this hydrogen, so the right-hand group gets the number three priority, and the left-hand group gets the lower number four priority. Now we've assigned the priorities. Before we go on, we need to erase the work that we just did so it doesn't distract us. And remember, that's something I recommend that you do when you, do, when you are doing these problems as well. Work in pencil, and once you've determined the priorities, go ahead and erase that work before you go on to the next step of determining R and S. Are we in case one or case two? Where's the number four priority? Is the number four, por is the number four priority pointing into the page? No. Here's the number four priority, and it's not pointing into the page. Instead, it's in the plane of the page. Well, if it's in the plane of the page, then it's not pointing into the page. So we're also, again, in this case of the number four priority not pointing into the page, because instead it's pointing in the plane of the page. Well, we need to swap it then so that it is pointing into the page. Well, now again, we have no choice. We have to swap the number four with the number one priority. Because the number one was pointing into the page. Now the number four priority is pointing into the page. That's what we have to do to be consistent with the official method. Step two, the configuration of one to two to three on the page now is clockwise, R. But step three, we cross out that letter, and the configuration before the swap was the opposite of that, or S. So the correct configuration of the original stereo center was S. Remember again that this is the method that you use when the number four priority is not pointing into the page. Well, now we've seen that there's two different ways that this can come up. One way this could come up is if the number four priority is pointing out of the page. If the number four priority is pointing out of the page, then it's clearly not pointing into the page. But in this example, we've seen a different way that this case could come up. It's also possible that the number four priority could start in the plane of the page. Notice that the number four priority here did not start on a wedge or a dash. It started in the plane of the page. Well, that still means it was not pointing into the page. So we still had to use this method of swapping the number four with a group that was pointing into the page. So if the number four priority starts out pointing out of the page, you need to swap it so that it's pointing into the page. 
And if the number four priority starts, uh, starts off pointing in the plane of the page, you still need to swap it so that it's pointing into the page. Anytime the number four priority does not start off pointing into the page, you have to swap it so that it is. So once again, we use this three-step method. If the number four priority is either pointing out of the page on a wedge, or if it's pointing in the plane of the page. The only time we don't need to use this method is if the number four priority started pointing into the page on a dash or on the vertical line in a Fisher projection.